Hello and welcome back. This is Dr. Jerry Cuomo. I'm filming. This is the third clip now of seven of a broken screw retrieval case of an implant that was, I want to say, placed about a year ago. Uh, there was some difficulty in trying to retrieve a broken screw coming from another dental office in Miami. So this case was strictly referred to me. Um, to make an attempt, I okayed um, much of the instrumentation that was going to be used uh, beforehand and also received a number of um, parts and, and things to use um, prior to, uh, to starting this case. So now I'm taking a quarter round burr, a quarter round, a brand new quarter round burr, and this is a slow handpiece, a slow reduction handpiece. Um, that I'm using and I'm just starting to create a little pilot hole in the top of the screw. The diameter of this um, burr, the diameter of the head is about 0.5 millimeters. So it's about a half a millimeter. The internal diameter of the threads is less than 1.8 millimeters. So you might be looking at 1.6 and maybe less than that. So you think about a half a millimeter and 1.5 millimeters, that's one third the actual internal diameter. So it's a good burr to use, good to start off. You're going to be using a number of these burrs. So you buy, I bought about 10 burrs to use and used every one of them. Um, you just don't see me rotating the burrs out of here. So I'm, I'm actually going in with a fresh burr. If you use a dull burr, you're going to end up with just the same problem that this uh, this dentist um, you know has. Not that he used a dull burr, but I'm just saying that you know it's, you're not going to be able to cut the metal, and uh, um, what's going to happen is you'll have a burnished appearance of the implant head, as what we saw here. So, a little at a time. I'm just removing some of the metal. This is just strictly right on the broken screw not on the fixture at all and my thought process now is to try to create um, a vacancy or a void so that I can then place another three, 330 inverted cone to try to reverse this screw so try to bind in and somehow and, and reverse it with the same process I used earlier so you have to have patience when you're removing a broken screw. It's not an easy um, proposition to take on. Um, this whole procedure, this entire procedure, I started at 3 o'clock and ended at 7. And I don't believe we took a break. I might have stretched a little bit, but I got back in. And, and um, none of us wanted to, to give up on this case. It's a diff very difficult case. So I'm... Removing some of the um, the metal right now, slowly. Um, I know the patient absolutely feels nothing. There's no generation of heat if you do it slowly and don't be in a hurry. Again, you, you can feel it grab in there and, and remove and, and prep metal. But you've got to also remember to remove the burr and just put a fresh one in. So that's what I'm doing now. And I'm testing now, see if there's been any movement. Sometimes it'll actually just come loose just by all the the contact and vibration of the burr. Angulation is important. I have a straight line look at the long axis of the implant. So um, I did not have a centering device or any type of lab analog that you could have possibly used in this case to try to um, make sure that your axis is straight with the implant. The problem with that is that there's a large or a long distance um, from the, uh, the broken screw to the top of the orifice of a analog. And I had that idea, but decided not to go with it. Um, 
because the shafts of the burrs were uh, a certain length and I could not um, travel all the way down through the shaft and with confidence. So direct vision for me was the best way to go. Again, making some small little attempts now to create about a depth of the burr head itself. So you got about a half a millimeter in. Um, it's good to have the screw, uh, a pristine screw available if you need to make any measurements, uh, knowing the diameter and dimensions and the length of the screw itself. Um, because when you when you go in and you start removing a um, a broken screw, you want to count threads, not only on the analog, but you want to count threads on the screw itself, and uh, so that you can keep track of those things um, as your process continues. So, again, there's no movement in the broken screw itself. So patience at this point. The pilot hole is drilled in the middle and it's drilled to about a depth of about a mill, almost a millimeter in depth. And then an attempt will be made with a 330 inverted cone, excuse me, a, a 33, correction on that, 33 inverted cone. Um, or a 34 inverted cone and try to insert that with a ratchet so you have to have a, a right angle adapter to a slow speed um, burr and then that would then fit into just about any of the um, implant kits I'm going to use a I believe I used a Nobel ratchet uh, to hold the, uh, the burr in place and I'm not sure if this is going to show that right now, but you'll see me go in a counterclockwise rotation. Uh, I believe we're still prepping here. Yes. This video is going to be around about 14 minutes, so I'm going to let it roll a little bit more. You'll be able to just see technique without me voicing over. Um, So there's our pilot Oh, and you can go one of two ways. You can try to back it out using the 330, or excuse me, the 33 and a half burr, or you can use a 33 or 34 inverted cone and a counter rotational movement. And after this attempt, um, a slot can be made where then a screwdriver, a flathead screwdriver can be placed. But it's kind of small in there. You know, you're dealing with uh, less than two millimeters diameter, uh, roughly 1.6 diameter, 1.6 millimeters. Okay. Uh, that burr is a little bit too large, so I'm going to scale back to a smaller inverted cone. And then I'm going to proceed to fit it in that access hole and see if we can just torque it uh, to the left or counterclockwise. If you can grab and create any kind of a frictional grip. Um, it, you can use that to your advantage. Um, there was also some talk about uh, maybe you can turn it right and then left or go continue to turn it right and try to embed the screw within the bottom portion of the fixture. That's a yes and no in my mind because I don't know how much room. It's very difficult to see even on an x-ray how much room you have. Uh, to place um, a small fracture like that. And then what? how many screws are you going to have left uh, within the fixture itself to accept a new screw? 
So my uh, approach is to try to get the screw out, not to push it in any further. All right, so here we go. We're going to make an attempt to unscrew this, and you're going to find out what happens here um, in about a minute. So I'm making the turn right now, and you'll see that the head of the of the inverted cone actually fractures, and um, and I'm able to go in and actually remove it and I believe this happened twice uh, within the same screw so and there's the pilot hole again Now I'm going to make my attempt to turn counterclockwise and see if the screw comes loose. So it was able to bind um, the head of the burr in there. But the problem is um, it then it separates, I believe it just let's see if it separates. Yep. There it is. So you see the top of the burr itself now it's separated. It's in the pilot hole. So now I'm going to take an explorer and actually remove that piece and go to a another technique on the next video. All right. So this is uh, video clip three. Um, in my mind now, the uh, the process is probably going to go to the next um, technique where I'm going to slot the uh, the head of this broken screw and see if I can get a screwdriver in there. There are other um, advisors, you know, in this field where they can actually drill a hole through the broken screw itself and try to uh, dislodge it after drilling straight through it. Um, there's some risk involved with that and um, patients need to be aware of, of uh, all the risks involved. So here I make another attempt to unscrew that uh, with an inverted three th uh, 33 uh, or 34 cone inverted cone burr and uh, again, the screw is not turning whatsoever. And there's another fracture. So, you know, that technique uh, might work in other cases. This one, obviously, it didn't. So we will clean this up, bring you back to the next clip, which is um, the fourth, where we will slot a hole. And um, I will show you also how I hone instrumentation and I might use more than one instrument to try to back this screw out. This is Dr. Jerry Cuomo. We'll see you on the next clip. Thanks for watching.